There are all kinds of sins and all kinds of temptations. There is the sin of misogyny and the temptation to treat women as less than equal to men. There is the sin of greed and the temptation to abuse one's employees or not to pay them a living wage. There is the sin of xenophobia or being inhospitable and the temptation to open one's countries and neighborhoods only to rich white immigrants, not to the poor, brown, or black. Then there is the sin of bibliolatry <laughs> and the temptation to worship various Bible passages as an idol, especially if such fragments happen to confirm one's biases. Indeed, there are all kinds of sins and all kinds of temptations, but turning stones into bread is not on any list of sins whatsoever, not in the Bible and not in the Catechism. Unlike turning water into wine, I imagine that even our Baptist friends would be perfectly fine with Jesus turning stones into bread. Why then is it called a temptation at all? Perhaps it's not about the action Jesus was supposed to perform, but about the first part of the devil's tempting question. You see, the devil begins his first and third temptation by saying, if you are the Son of God, do this or do that. Here lies the real temptation, to sow a doubt in God's love. Hoping to catch Jesus exhausted by fasting, the devil attempts to put into question Jesus' identity as God's beloved child. So he says, if you really are the Son of God, you should have no problem by proving it to me, by doing this or that. It really is not about turning stones into bread, and not even about jumping down from the parapet of the temple. It is about causing someone to doubt their own identity as God's child. We too are tempted in the same way. How devious is the tempter, seeking and finding us at our lowest points, whispering to our tired hearts, you are not worthy of love, you are failure, and you do not deserve God's love. I beg you today, do not listen to that voice. Even if such words are spoken by a friend, a family member, or a clergy person, turn away, turn them off, and then know that first and foremost you are God's beloved child, and that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. Amen.